John Beltran and Dave Urich back from Yuma High School. Brush leading 15-10. to 10. And other than Platte Valley, which led 7 nothing going into the fourth quarter a few weeks ago, this is the closest an opponent has been with 12 minutes to go in a game this season, Dave. Yeah, the Yuma Indians are just, they're just doing a great job of controlling the football when they're on offense. And defensively, they're, they're doing a pretty effective job of uh, stuffing things up there in the middle. I remember Coach Broughton, when, when he was here, he was one of the, the best coaches for stopping this brush offense. If there was one guy that could stop the trap, that was Coach Broughton, and it looks like the coaches that are here now have, have learned a few things from him. But the Beat Diggers in an excellent position now at the 35-yard line of Yuma, second down and two. And attempting to grab a double-digit lead. Brush did lead early, 8 nothing. And then it was 8-3, 10 to 8 Yuma, 15 to 10 Brush. Neither team has scored since the second quarter. And on the opening play of quarter number four, Nick Dreitz will hand it off a big hole right up the gut for Aaron Quinlan. Does close rather quickly, but not before he gains about four yards to the 31-yard line and gets a first down. The initial hit by the 6'1", 210-pound senior Nathaniel Pletcher. You know, I just watched Grant Jano at his center position. Yuma's got a pretty big, stocky guy there playing across from him. And, and Jeno, he snapped the ball and stepped at the same time, and he was in that kid's numbers and shoved him all the way down the line of scrimmage. That four yards is, is all a credit to Grant Jeno's block in there on the offensive line. First down and 10, the option right for Nick Dreitz, and he will keep it himself, and he gets to around the 25-yard line, zigzagging his way before he's brought down over there by Ryan Lebsack. There was some indecision by Dreitz. He was waiting to see whether the one of the defensive players would commit towards him and then pitch it, but it never happened, so he gained five yards. Yeah, he was smart. He just kept the football. He, it's like he almost stopped kind of wanting the guy to come up and tackle him so that he could pitch it. The guy never came, so Nick just turned it upfield for six yards. Second down and five from the Yuma 25-yard line. Rush up by five, and motion to the left is Raul Sanchez. And Dreitz with a handoff to Quinlan. He drives to the 21-yard line, picks up four running off left tackle as Nathaniel Pletcher makes this play. And it'll be third down and less than a yard. That was that 47, so Brush is just uh, using Quinlan with that off tackle and lead blocking with Bass out there on the defensive end. And just that one play is just working like a charm and taking Quinlan all the way up to 138 yards tonight. Third down and less than a yard to go for the 21. And Dreitz will send Jared Spooner in motion to the left. There's the pitch left to Bass, a seam for a first down at the 15, and he bowls his way to around the 11. A gain of 10 for Dustin Bass before combining on the tackle with Ryan Lepsack and Nathaniel Pletcher. I just love that play because it's third and whenever it's like third and short or second and short, the defensive coaches on the other side, they've got to put all their people up there in between the tackles and assume that the team's going to dive or quarterback keeper it right over the middle or something. And then you come out and you throw a quick pitch out there where they don't have any defenders and pick up huge yards. I just think that's a great call. First down and 10 from the 10. They could get a first down, I believe, inside the one. It's pretty close. Spooner is in motion to the right. Dreitz to Quinlan, off right tackle to the five. He drives, he scores a touchdown, standing up, AQ from 10 yards away. And the Beat Diggers now lead 21 to 10 with 9.42 to go in the game. So the coaches is putting together a really nice drive there. So they ran quick pitch left with Bass for the first down. Then they come back and fake the quick pitch to the right and just hand it to Quinlan. And Quinlan goes in the end zone almost untouched. Gets him to 152 yards tonight on 18 carries. Aaron Quinlan's second touchdown of the night. And the extra point to be attempted by Rafael Munoz. Dustin Bass, the holder. There's the snap. That kick is up. That kick is good. The Beat Diggers, two minutes and 18 seconds into the fourth. Lead Yuma 22 to 10 on 10-10, KSIR and KSIR.com. Eight plays, 57 yards, and three minutes and 44 seconds. Aaron Quinlan scores on a 10-yard run. Beat Diggers now lead 22-10. Lucas Lubers 
is going to be tackled at the 30-yard line, a return of 20, and a late flag comes in. Gare Rudnick makes the tackle. Now let's see what that flag is all about, Dave, because that was thrown uh, from the Yuma bench all the way towards the middle of the field. Yeah, I don't know. It looked like he was throwing it right out to some Yuma, Yuma kids, too. I'm not sure what this call is going to be. A block in the back, and that's going to take them probably to around the 20-yard line or maybe down to the 15. And it will be just outside the 20. You know what was weird was the play was long over when the flag flew, so I thought it was an after the, after the play was over kind of penalty, like unsportsmanlike or something. Just shy of the 21-yard line. First and 10 for the Indians. Off the double wing formation, the pitch to Louvers running right back towards the middle, and he squeezes his way for about five yards to the 26-yard line. Cameron Alexander was there to make the tackle along with Roy Grauberger. At 502 Ensign in downtown Fort Morgan, the place to shop for all of your appliance needs, B&B Appliance, a member of the brand sourced retail program. Yuma's been in a no-huddle, I should say, all night. And they do that anyway right now, down by 12 with about nine minutes to go. The pitch left to Darren Spencer, taking it towards the outside. He's across the 30 to that 31, and a gain of five on the play should be a first down. They might have to measure because he's yeah, even with a stick. On that carry, he's be close to what he got Lubers for 37 yards on 12 carries, Spencer 35 yards on 12 carries, and Durland 32 yards on six carries. So they're all right there around 35 yards. First and 10 for the Indians at their own 31-yard line. They've got to break off a big one. If not, they're just going to be chewing up the game clock, both teams with their full complement of timeouts. And there's the handoff right up the gut and nothing. I mean, that play went nowhere. I believe that was Durland again. And, boy, brush all over the ball carrier. It'll be second down and ten for Yuma. Yeah, that didn't fool anybody that time. And a whole bunch of brush defenders were there making the tackle, a lot of team tackling. They're going to backtrack that football to just outside the 30, second down and 11. They've got to get to the 41-yard line. 8.17 to go in the game. Brush 22, Yuma 10. The pitch to Lubers running right back towards the middle, spinning to around the 32. And he'll pick up a couple of yards in the play, close to three. But it'll be third down and nine to go for the Indians. For financial needs, think Okeson and Associates. And next door, wash your vehicle at the corner car wash, 842-5722. That's Okeson and Associates. Third down and nine from the 32. Passing situation perhaps for the Indians. Terrell back to throw. Heaves it down the left sideline. Flag is down. It's incomplete. Broken up by Arturo Matos and around the 46-yard line. And now the penalty flag is going to be a determinant here. could be a determinant as to whether Yuma goes backwards or they get a first down as a result of a beat digger penalty. Boy, Maltos had some good coverage there on that play. Outstanding. He was right there, and he reached out with his left hand, and he swatted the ball down right when it got there, and, and he was ready to make a tackle as well. Oh, that's a 10-yard penalty against the beat diggers for holding. That was thrown by the back judge. Anytime that happens, it usually ends up being against the defense. It looked like the brush defensive end over here on this side looked like he grabbed a hold of that tight end and kind of tackled him when the guy was trying to go out for a, when he was trying to go out for a pass. Yuma first down at their own 42-yard line, so the drive stays alive. And Terrell on the inside handoff to Durland. Boy, he's running hard to the 45-yard line, but stood up there. Isaac Rodriguez makes the tackle, a gain of three, setting up a second down and seven yards to go. Morgan Medical will take care of your sports medicine needs. They also offer back braces, walkers, canes, medical alert bracelets, home oxygen equipment, and much more. Morgan Medical... 201 Main in Fort Morgan. For the 45, second down and seven. The clock at 6.52 to go. Beat Diggers lead by a dozen. Terrell will hand it off to Lubers, and he is taken down after a gain of two, maybe three. Nick Dreitz grabbed him around the ankle, and a late flag. A late flag, and that's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct against Yuma. So a gain of two for Lubers. And then 15 the other way, Dave, and that's really going to hurt Yuma. 
Yeah, that's a, that's when you you're really shooting yourself in the foot, and when you're starting to lose your cool and and uh, committing a bad penalty just out of being you know unsportsmanlike. Yeah, it appeared that Adam Waters was uh, blocked late, still being blocked and roughed up there after the whistle because that's the direction the flag was thrown in. So now Yuma in a heap of trouble. The ball at their own 32-yard line, third down, and a little bit over 20 yards to go. They've got to get to just shy of the brush 47-yard line, and receivers are split left and right. And we're approaching six and a half minutes to go in the game. Let's see if the beat diggers can apply the pressure on the quarterback. Terrell rolling to his right, throwing across the field. It is caught. Durland breaks a tackle, and now he fumbles the football towards the brush sideline. Let's see if it's recovered by the beat diggers, or Durland might have actually, uh, there's a late flag, by the way, jumped on it himself, and I think this unsportsmanlike conduct could come against brush. I'm not sure, but it looks like there's just it's just turning into kind of a sloppy game, and, and you hate to see that happen, but... You know, I got to kind of blame this one on the on the officials, you know, for letting him get this sloppy just because there were so many penalties that were let go earlier in the game, you know, motion and and whenever you're letting a lot of little things go and you're not throwing a flag then, then all those things escalate into bigger penalties and and that's where the officials have themselves caught right now. Pick up a 5 on the play and this will be unsportsmanlike to, against brush, unsportsmanlike conduct. So a 5-yard pass to Durland there. And now this football is going to be in beat digger territory with 6.18 to go. And you're right, Dave, this uh, is a little bit out of control right now. Anytime you see penalties like that by both sides on the same drive, and that one gives Yuma a first down at the Brush 46-yard line. This will be the eighth play of the drive. The one thing that is benefiting Brush is that Yuma has taken nearly three and a half minutes off the clock, and they're nowhere near the end zone. But they are in Brush territory. On first and ten, the pitch to Spencer. He runs into a blocker, and then he's back to the line of scrimmage. And the beat diggers bring him down right there. Boy, excellent penetration by Brush, reading that play perfectly. And where I'm standing, I was looking right down the line of scrimmage before they snapped the ball, and... Let me tell you, that brush defensive line, they didn't give up an inch. They had it all stuffed up there. Yeah, Yuma's going to have to throw if they want to get on the scoreboard any time in the next two or three minutes because they haven't broken off a real big running play. They've been four or five yards, like you mentioned earlier, in a cloud of dust. Second down and 10 from the 46-yard line. Terrell this time on the option right will pitch it over to Lubers. Has the right sideline to around the 43. Excellent open field tackle by Derek Cordova, limiting Lubers to a three-yard gain, making it third down and seven. And the reason that was such a great play, not only because it was individual, but he kept him in bounds. Yeah, and also the fact that Cameron Alexander just nailed Terrell right right after he pitched it. So he knew right away that he was going to have to pitch it, and he wasn't going to be able to have the option of uh, keeping it himself just because of that kind of defensive pressure. That ball just inside the brush, 43. Third down. And a long six to go for the Indians. Two receivers out to the left. And on third down, Terrell with the inside handoff to Durland. He's got a first down, still driving, still driving. Inside the 35 to around the 31-yard line. 12 yards for Durland. And Yuma continues the drive with 4.43 to go. Were these kind of offenses where they just kind of keep pounding the ball at you and uh, they, they kind of double-team you and they lead block on you. It's a frustrating offensive uh, offense to play defense against, and, and the, the Diggers are doing a pretty good job, even though that one was a little bit frustrating. And off the Durlin right up the gut, he'll gain two yards to the 28-yard line. Isaac Rodriguez brings him down. For great family entertainment, be sure to check out Fire Lanes at 220 Cambridge and Brush. Walk in or reserve your time at fire lanes today. The Yuma, Dave, is sticking with their game plan, but it's going to cost them because we're talking about a drive right now that has taken up five and a half minutes, and that's a problem when you're down and your running game is so much stronger than your passing game, but they are moving the football nicely. Second down and eight from the 28. Terrell 
on the option left, back towards the middle. He spins to around the 25-yard line, gaining three. Rodriguez again there, along with Ryan Nichols, to bring him down to the ground. It'll set up a third down and five, but, boy, the clock keeps ticking. They've got all three timeouts and 3.35 to go in the game. 